As introduced, I'm Eckhard Grohl. I'm uh, the head of the School of Mechanical Engineering here at Purdue and um, started pretty much at a, a similar time as uh, Bill, both academically but also as a head. And I uh, really have been enjoying uh, this position, uh, moving the schools uh, uh, forward. But today, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce to you uh, Professor Adrian Buganza Tepoli. Uh, Adrian got his BS uh, from the University of the uh, Panamericana in 2010, then a master's in 2012, uh, and a PhD in 2015. Both of those are graduate degrees from Stanford, so he moved uh, to the US after that, after his bachelor. Uh, then uh, switched from Stanford to Harvard for a year to be a postdoc, and started at Purdue in uh, 2016 as an assistant professor. So you can, I like to, to go through these years because you see the rapid progression of his career and uh, how he moved uh, uh, through the system. So uh, in 21, that just this August, he was now promoted to associate professor after being uh, uh, in rank for five years as an assistant professor. So there too, uh, uh, moving ahead uh, uh, quickly and certainly very deservingly so. So now he is an associate professor and he's part of our uh, celebrating associate professor, which uh, of course is really a, a nice event hosted by the college uh, to, uh, to really bring out uh, the, the contributions of our associate professor. Uh, his research, Adrian's research, focuses on engineering mechanics with applications to medicine. So there's an overlap maybe uh, to a uh, somewhat as uh, Shiwan uh, mentioned earlier, right, so uh, overlap with uh, uh, biomedical engineering. And, uh, but in particular, he advances computational mechanics methods and tools, and then makes uh, these tools and methods available to clinicians for real-time surgery planning and execution, as well as for long-term treatments after surgical procedures evolving skin and mechanical cues. Uh, his work is rooted in computational mechanics, incorporating experimental tissue biomechanics and 3D imaging analysis on animal and human subjects. Others have described uh, his research work as innovative, cutting edge, and real world impact. Uh, for this type of research, he has uh, attracted significant funding uh, from various agencies, including NSF and NIH, as well as uh, from, from industry. And he has been very productive, uh, as you can imagine, uh, to publishing, disseminating these results, uh, considering his uh, rapid progression in promotion and other activities. Uh, but. Uh, on top of all of this, I would like to mention that he's an effective and innovative instructor. For example, he has incorporated innovative computational simulations and exercises into some of our basic courses, even like ME 270, right, which is statics, ME uh, 274 dynamics, uh, but then uh, later on also in the course of introduction to finite element analysis. And that's a really great contribution to the school, uh, using what you learn maybe from research uh, to incorporate in your classes. So these curricular developments include Python coding, data visualization, and data curation. On a personal note, uh, I would like to mention that he's always eager and willing to help the school, which is greatly appreciated if you're ahead of the school. Uh, he has uh, served as the uh, representative of our assistant professors while he was assistant professors, and now he got promoted, and he had never nothing else to do than to immediately volunteer, and uh, as well as being elected by the associate professor to represent the associate professors now uh, on our ME leadership team uh, that meets once a month. And uh, his input there is, uh, is really valuable, I can always count on him, and I appreciate a lot. So with that, I will hand it over to Adrian. Adrian, uh, well, looking forward to your presentation. 
uh, thank you very much. Thanks so much, Eckhart, for the for the introduction. I'm really humbled to to be here. I'm sorry I cannot uh, be there in person, um, but the, hopefully I can I can give you a little bit of the more details uh, on top of what Eckhart has said. But first of all, I, I think following more of what Chi Huan was saying, I think the first thing would be to really thank everybody that has supported me in the five years that I've been at Purdue. I think that is really the, the secret sauce. I don't think it's so much what I bring. Obviously, I, I work hard, but I, we, we all work hard. But I think the secret sauce is Purdue itself. I think uh, the environment that has created for assistant professors is just perfect for success. So I'll give you a little bit of a background of where uh, my trajectory and then more details on the research and teaching. Um, I think that's kind of how I prepared the presentation. So a little bit about me. I'm originally from um, Cordoba in Mexico, so south uh, east of Mexico. You can see the little star there in the in the map. And then I moved uh, for my undergrad to Mexico City. I was in Mexico City for five years. So I did my undergrad there, and then I was a high school teacher uh, in Mexico City. So I knew that I wanted to stay in academia from that, uh, from that point. Uh, then I came to the US in 2010. Uh, I did my master's and PhD at Stanford. So I was there for five years. Then I did a very short postdoc. So I moved across the country, and I was in Boston uh, for one year between 2015 and 2016. And then I moved to Purdue in 2016, where I have been uh, for the past five and a half years or so. Uh, and then, so what do I do uh, in terms of research? I would say my lab has kind of two main thrusts. One is uh, incorporating mechanics and machine learning. That's one, one big um, area that I focus on. Uh, and then the other one is trying to incorporate mechanics with biology for, for biomedical applications or mechanics plus mechanobiology. And I think those two have been pretty much uh, the core of, of my, my research in this, this past five years. And typically I've been working on problems that tend to do with skin, so wound healing, pressure ulcers, growing skin. Um, and that's just because it's a really good model system it's easily accessible, so you can image it without uh, sort of complicated imaging setups. You don't need MRI uh, necessarily. You can, you can do 3D pictures, for example. Uh, you can harvest uh, tissues. So it's just very convenient as a model system. And that's not the only tissue that I've been working on, but I think that's definitely the one that I, I have used mostly as a model system. Uh, for different applications, for example, wound healing and pressure ulcers, skin growth, so growing skin, skin graft, uh, and reconstructive surgery. So I'm going to talk a little bit about just one of them, uh, which is the reconstructive surgery. And the reason why I want to highlight it is because um, kind of like Chi Huan, I think one of the motivations for me is to try to do work that has some real world impact. And this project I, I really, really like because it's really connected to what physicians do. Uh, so, for example, it is one case where you can have a patient that is going to undergo some, some surgery because it needs to replace that scar and it needs to grow skin in order to have new skin to replace that scar. So we have 3D imaging analysis to get that type of geometry of the patient before the surgery and then also during and after the surgery. And based on that, we can create patient-specific models that we can use to simulate what the, the formation of the tissue would be and try to anticipate where, where would you have complications. Uh, this is a little bit of how we use machine learning to then try to replace the usual computational tools. So typically we run a finite element simulation like it's shown in the, in the slide, but that usually requires a lot of computational power. So it's not particularly good for doing things like optimization or uncertainty analysis where you want to get an idea of you know, what's the most uh, dangerous place or where do you expect that you will have problems for wound healing. Um, and so replacing the finite element solver with some uh, machine learning meta model is usually good for doing that type of uncertainty or optimization problem. So here we, we were able to determine the regions that were more at risk and actually indeed 
the two regions that are highlighted in our analysis actually were the ones that had slight uh, delayed in wound healing, uh, but you know everything was all right at the end. Um, so then we moved a little bit to sort of back from the patient specific case to try to do some more genetic simulations. So these are common uh, flaps that surgeons decide uh, to use. Uh, they have names. So this one is called the advancement flap. Uh, this one is called the rotation flap. And this one is called the transposition flap. And so we were interested in, again, trying to replace these simulations with some uh, machine learning meta model and then trying to use the, the meta model to do optimization. So that's, that's sort of what we were uh, trying to do here. So going from uh, the, the basic designs to try to optimize the, the surgery and then trying to use that information and then going back to the patient specific cases where we can, it's the same pipeline that I was showing before. We have patients, we know what surgery they're going to go through. We can take pictures, get the, the model and then uh, simulate what the, what the stress distribution would look like in the end. So the optimizations that we do are in terms of mechanics. And that's because the, the mechanical state is related to the to complications, to wound complications. So it's not, we're, in these simulations at least, we are not solving the full coupled problems where we take into account, you know, things like inflammation or all the biology that, that takes place. That is something we are also doing, but I would say that is a little bit more basic science at the moment. Um, but in terms of, of what do we do with the patient specific simulations, because we can take a look at uh, stress and then that we don't need to worry about all these other details. We do this uh, based on just basically stress distribution in the tissue. Um, yeah, and this is what it looks like. And this is the actual um, outcome of the surgery for, for these two surgeries, these two cases. Um, so that, that I think it's kind of, the, I would say a little bit of flavor of uh, what I do. There's other projects that I've been working on, but I don't, uh, I don't wanna bore you with the details, but things like skin growth to grow new skin, wound healing applications, uh, doing more sort of basic uh, progress in data-driven and uncertainty analysis of, of tissue, and then applications in reconstructive surgery. Um, that's about what I have for research. And then I did want to say uh, one thing about teaching, because I also really like uh, teaching and incorporating sort of creative ways of, of doing teaching. So what I have been doing this semester is I've been teaching the honors uh, section of ME 270. And I don't know if anyone in the audience is familiar with Minecraft. Any of your kids, if you have kids uh, play Minecraft or you yourself play Minecraft. And this is because in some of the, of the surveys for students at the beginning of the semester, if you ask them, you know, what are you interested in? You do get sometimes some um, video game and I, myself uh, like playing video games. So then I thought, oh, why not bring these two together? Uh, and so with a group of undergrads, we've coded an elasticity solver, a mesh-free elasticity solver in this video game. And we've been doing basically challenges to connect the concepts of 270 and 323 uh, with challenges in this, in this video game. So what I'm showing here, for example, is this barn uh, trust challenge. So they had to build some roof over the, the barn. So such that it didn't break. And then they also had to show me that they could do the analysis by hand. And then this other one that you have here is for a bridge. So that's a beam design challenge. Again, trying to build the structure and then making sure that it doesn't break. Um, so that's one. And then the latest one, so the, our class on Thursday before Thanksgiving was this group challenge. So we were in the video game and we had um, you know, a copy of the Eiffel Tower kind of. And then the goal was to split them in groups and then they had to do sort of the supports. And then we ran the simulation in the end and then we see, hopefully they didn't break. Uh, apparently one student said it broke. I don't think it broke. I think it was close to breaking, but it didn't break. Um, that's it. So that's what I've been, I've been doing this semester, having fun with, uh, with ME270. And just to, to end, I just want to emphasize again, uh, the, the incredible support that I've been 
having here at Purdue. And in particular, I think special thanks to my, my direct mentors, uh, Thomas Sigmund, Eric Nauman, and Stuart Bolton, and Ecker, uh, the, the department chair. I think their, their support, uh, especially toward the end to submit the, the tenure package and go through the, the process is really, really appreciated. And I don't have a list of all, all the people. I mean, there's a lot of colleagues and friends at Purdue who have supported me in these five years. I don't have a, a complete list, but I, I wanted to have this uh, special mention to my direct mentors and department chair who are, were instrumental in the, in the last year, especially uh, during the pandemic and submitting the tenure package and going through, through the process. Uh, and more thanks, I think, for to my lab. So all the students, definitely the talent in the in the group is what makes the work actually happen. Uh, collaborators, both at Purdue and outside of Purdue, that I can list, and then some funding sources. Um, and that's it. That's all I have. So thanks again for giving me this opportunity to talk a little bit about uh, the work that I do. So I guess I have the the usual uh, slide, but. Yeah, I think that's that's all I have. I'll stop sharing. Great. Thank you very much, Adrian. Really appreciate it. Uh, any questions for Adrian? Maybe uh, I can start out. Uh, Adrian, uh, as a mechanical engineer, how do you establish contact with a surgeon to, uh, to do some of the, the skin things that uh, you have done on actual patients? I think just cold calling uh, people. Uh, BME, for example, does a really good job of connecting. So bring, doing events where the surgeons from IU come to campus or events where uh, colleagues from BME and ME go to, to IU and have poster sessions or brainstorming sessions. So I think that type of effort is what just bringing people together and then just having talked to each other. So I've benefited from, from that type of, uh, of setup. Yep. Thank you. Um, anything in the chat? I see a question in the Yeah, can you see chat. it? Um, are there any other video games that you are interested in integrating into the classroom? Uh, not at the moment, because I don't know how editable they are. And the nice thing with Minecraft, if, if anybody knows, knows Minecraft, uh, is that it allow, it's very easy. There's a lot of sort of well-established methods to edit the game. So it's not like we are hacking the game. The game itself it allows for people to code their, they are called mods, they, they even have a name. Um, so that's why I, I, I decided to go with, with Minecraft. Um, but no, I haven't really looked into, into other video games. It would be, be cool. I, I think it would depend on how easy it is to, to edit. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Bill. Hey, Adrian, this is Bill Crossley from Arrow and Astro. I actually do a lot of work in optimization myself, so I'm kind of curious about what kind of surrogate models are you using and what advantages are you seeing? Is it is it a, a massive speed up? Does it smooth the function? What's making an advantage for your problems? Uh, mostly speed up. Uh, just replacing the simulation that would take, you know, the order of hours to something that just takes maybe milliseconds to to evaluate. Uh, even if there's some uncertainty associated with the with the result, you can always use the sort of the meta model to do an optimization and then also find maybe points where you don't know much about the the function and maybe refine. So you don't have to run as many of the of the costly simulations, but mostly speed up. I would say. Okay. Uh, let's see. Adrian, what's next? That's one, that's one of the standard questions uh, that we have here for our associate professor. What's your plan? What's your goals, you know, being in this profession? Uh, difficult, very difficult question because I think the, the short, uh, short term challenges are pretty clear because there's research projects that are moving on. So in that sense, I think definitely tackling those. Um, I think I will have a little bit harder time defining 
you know, like a 10 year or 20 year uh, plan at the moment. I think one plan is, is that, is to, to try to figure out, you know, more, more longer term now that I have gone through this first, this first uh, stage. But I think one thing is clear, I definitely want to have impact in, in real world applications. So kind of like Chi Huan was saying, I think that is definitely a, a big motivation to plan things around. And of course, getting promoted to full professor, that's always next for every associate professor. True, but true. Uh, maybe the last question, what's the background? Very quickly. Oh. Uh, this is a new collaborative effort with uh, Dave Umelis, who's the, the PI on this institute proposal that was awarded to Purdue um, and other institutions, but Purdue, uh, Dave Umelis is the, is the PI. And it's called the Embryo Institute. And this is work that I'm really excited to, to continue. So this just got awarded this year, and it's about integrating information from different species, different scales, uh, particularly around uh, sort of morphogenesis type of problem, which is what I'm interested in, and how do we use computational models to to do that integration of systems that are maybe you know plants to to mammals to to um, you know fish. So how do you tie together the sort of rules of life question, and that's kind of the what the the institute is about, and this is the logo of the of the institute. So very cool looking. All right, Adrian, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. I'm always amazed by the talent that we have at Purdue. So thank you very much for coming for today.